I guess, would you recommend others to get reptilian infusions? Well, not everyone should get reptilian infusions. I was surprised that Jim got reptilian infusions. It's not his nature, but I understand his reasoning, but I, I'm not sure I agree with it. Not everyone should get it, no. Only those who feel that that is something necessary for them. You understand? Uh, you know, to feel that something is necessary for you, it would be very helpful to reason uh, to know what it is. So what yes. is that reptilian quality? Reptilian quality is a little more harsh. Not, not to say that it's not loving, but it's a harsher existence in the sense that um, some of them are cold-blooded, as you know. And some have evolved into warm-bloodedness, which is fine, but a lot can go between cold-blooded and hot-blooded or warm-blooded. So, um, a cold-blooded entity hybridization entering human uh, DNA is very difficult at times. It can cause uh, some reactions, and some are very unpleasant. But what would be the result? The result is high, a, a greater thought capacity, a different thought capacity, a more survivalistic thought path, pattern, but yet survival for everyone, not just themselves. Your people seem to not think about survival as much as you do many other things. Do you understand? Let's see if I can... What are you doing? Oh, oh you're see. on camera. Ah, oh, I see. All right, so Lightworker, who is love and light, invites a reptilian, and then he starts thinking about survival? Well, survival of the planet. Okay. Survival is the one of the main topics of reptilians. Do you understand? I do, this, I do. They, Survival for self, survival for children, survival for the planet, but they are community, so this all comes, this makes them a little more violent sometimes. Because if they feel that their someone is being offensive toward their people, they will defend it. Likewise, if they will defend in a light way as they're being offended. Once I asked a reptilian, I don't know which species was that, but it was possibly outside of solar system. I asked them what makes them proud, and they said that we survived. Yes, survival. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is one of their most proudest features because there was a period in their history where survival was utmost importance. And it's become sort of a inbred tradition with them that survival be a very much part of who they are. Because it, it's their pride that they have survived, of course. And it's their notion to continue to survive. And they would like other species to survive as well, but of course, the, looking out for alien number one, so... So what would be other positive influences? On they are highly intellectual. They have a numerical uh, understanding that's greater than m many species. They can make numbers into... They create a number system, which you, everyone has a number system that is similar, of course, because, of course, numbers are the perfection of the universe, in a way. You can make anything into a number. But they have it, they have it down to a science where there's numerals attached to literally everything in their society. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very efficient. So how good are hybrids between, say, reptilians and the AL? Um, 
actually better than you might think. Reptilian and Pleiadian are the hardest to get along, actually. Within the body? Yes. So if you have Pleiadian, why would you invite Reptilian? That is a good question. Right. Now, uh, I'm thinking about inviting Liron uh, yes. infusion. What would be the outcome? What, what should I expect? One moment. Liren? Ah, okay. With the Liren hybrid, you should expect to feel stronger. Um, they have a physiology that is very strong and very healthy. They keep themselves very healthy. They have a regimented exercise program, which is very different than what you might think. It's not like regular exercise. Every day is a different kind of exercise. So that it's total, totally fits the entire body. Even they have mental exercises as well. Lyrans are extremely analytical. So expect to become more analytical, and you're analytical enough, pretty much, but expect to become even more so because their analysis abilities are very, very high, and it's something that they are called to do, to analyze things. So, um, with Liren, you will become one of the most analytical scientists in the world. What is wrong with his face? So, um, yes, there is much... What else? Liren. Hmm. They are a little hairier. I don't, wouldn't say that you'll get more hair. You're already sort of furry anyway. So, you'll probably stay the same. But, um... Do you know about human, humans who were infused with uh, Lyrans? Yes, I do. So, the effects would be that what you said? They become more tranquil. Tranquil. More analytical, stronger character. They they definitely stand their ground. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that is the part which I am missing. Yeah. They definitely stand their ground with whatever they discover to be true. If if it resonates with them, they do not give up their resonations easily. It can be changed, but it's rare. Now, suppose I invite Yael, what would that make? Yael are more creative. You know, creative thoughts and creative energies. Also, m able to multitask like mad. They can do four or five things at once. Uh, what it is, is they have what you call dimensional channeling. And they can go into a channel, out of a channel, into a channel, out of a channel, into a channel, out of a channel. So they can get much work done in a very short period of time because they can direct uh, dimensional energies into their thought patterns. Yes. yes. So you heal, although they don't move through dimensions as much as you might think, but they use the dimensions much more than anybody else. They use them for their channeling and to get ideas for cr their creativeness. And they are very, very creative. And they like to be in charge. And they do well at this because they are very diplomatic. They can be, they can be ruthless, actually, at times as well. In their, in their whole being, if there's something that needs to be done... They will be ruthless about how to carry on that. They will not hurt anyone, of course, but they will push them out of the way, definitely, to get to where they need to be. Does that make sense to you? Oh, that's my young nature. Yes. They push, they push. They push, they push. And to get where they need to go, they will push you out of the way and say, I'm sorry, but I'm pushing you out of the way. Oh, that's me. Yes. <laughs> um... And they will, um, and creative, very creative. Just like you, you have a lot of Yigil nature. So, you know other Yigil hybrids, human Yigil hybrids who have that quality? Yes. 
any effects of uh, effects on health? Actually, it improves health in uh, improves mental health mm. because what it does is let them it uh, balances out the brain activity. Since they move from dimensional, they have to be very balanced in their mindsets. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Their, their brain is very, very well balanced, otherwise they could not do this, moving around mm -hmm. so quickly. So they, it balances out the brain activity so that mental illness is probably non-existent. I see. Um, also, physiologically, the knees are affected usually. They have weak knees. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's me too. They have weak knees because they do not, their, their structure over the centuries has weakened a little because they were sitting and thinking more than they were active. Their exercise regimen is much, much less. However, they do a lot of mental healing on the body. Uh -huh. So that is how they keep, remain uh, structurally safe. So that is my yell part, yeah. Yes, their knees are very weak. I feel a lot of yell qualities. Yes. Not clear of yell. I'm yell. Yes, you're definitely yell. Oh. 20 what percent? <laughs> Something there. Mm, not sure. Again, you're playing with percentages. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. It doesn't matter to me That's at this point. All right, Pleiadian, what Pleiadian does? Pleiadian is very calm, very friendly, outgoing, wonderful, loving, intellectual, but modest. Uh, they, they can be very, very intellectual, but they're not the kind of people that will tell you that they are intellectual. And they're very, very giving, generous, generous, generous. If they could give you anything that you want, they would do it. If they cannot, they are unhappy. If they cannot give you everything that they that you want, they are unhappy because they feel feel that their lives are so full at times. They want everyone to feel that. Um, of course, there is negative things in their lives as well, but they give thanks even for the negativity because they learn from it, grow from it, and are able to help others from it. So. When something negative comes along, no matter how long it is, you will not hear a Pleiadian complain. Complaining is not something that, if you hear a Pleiadian complain, they, it's, a, I, I never did ever hear that, so. I did. You did hear a, ne a negative complaint from a Pleiadian? Yeah, all when? the time. From Pleiadians? Yes. Which one, Tepe? I wouldn't tell, but there was a Pleiadian which was complaining all the time. That just not is their nature. That really is not their nature. Okay. I'm surprised. So I will have to go back through your records and see who that was. Is it on film? I can tell you, but not not on record. Okay. Is it on film? On audio. It's only on audio. Yeah. Early records on audio. Ah. But I will tell you next time. I will tell Jim after the session. Ah. Because it's very unlike, it, it's very rare that they ever complain. All right. So, uh, what is physiological uh, effect of Pleiadian and Fusion? Physiologically, they have, they have a divided heart. So, it tends to not help the heart. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't, they do it in such a way that it... It just maintains a neutrality, so mm -hmm. okay. try not to hurt the heart at all. But if they were to actually add that full DNA and you yell, the heart would suffer and have problems. I'm talking about Pleiadian to a human, a Norse human. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. All right. All right, and also their diet. Very, they have a very small diet. It's it's very it's liquids and powders and and nothing that is actually very tasty, so uh, it would affect your the appetite of the human. Oh, decrease it. Pardon? It will decrease the appetite. Yes. How about energy? 
Energy's great. They have a great energy. So oh. they have very warm, friendly, outgoing, gregarious, happy, joyful energy. I mean, if you eat less, the energy would go be also less. Not necessarily. They eat things that are energized. So they, the, everything that they take has energy within it that helps their body. But the humans which will infuse Pleiadian, you know... They will learn what things the, to eat that are high energy and things that will make them um, happy. Okay. The body happy. Too much food. Humans eat too much food anyway. How about your blues? Ah. You will have a... Hmm. It's hardest to tell about me because I'm so close to it, but Either. you will feel intellectually challenged by literally everything <laughs> because there's more questions to answer than there is time for them to be answered. So we question everything. We are a very inquisitive race and therefore we have gotten many answers and studied many planets and universes, not universes, galaxies, I should say, and um, know much about these things. And so now we are trying to find things, like humans, that pique our curiosity. We are still very interested in you. You are carried away. If a human gets a blue infusion, what should a human expect? Is it a possible, you know, you're quite distant from us. Yes. Is it possible to get a uh, blue infusion? Yes. Would it harm the physiology? Mm. If you want to shrink a little, we're short. If you were born with blue, small blue Pleiadian, your stature would probably be a slightly smaller than average human being. Your disposition would be playful. Your highest excitement would be learning everything. But, but there is no human who would receive the blue genome in adult age, right? Not recently. But in the past there were? In the past we did come here and do some hybridization. And it, we didn't find it to be very successful. It wasn't the outcome that we were looking for. Uh, so if a human invites Pleiadian or your, specifically your personal uh, blue genome, would it be possible for them to receive it? Yes, but it would have to be agreed upon by everyone on the planet. Would it be likely? Um, not at this time. I see. Oh, Arcturian, Arcturian. Would it be possible to invite Arcturian and get it? Yes. Suppose I invited Arcturian, what would happen? Arcturian is a different dimension, you have to understand. They'd have to bring their hybridization program into the third dimension where they started, but it is possible for them to do hybridization. Now, you would become much more spiritual in nature in some senses in third dimensional spirituality, even though their spirituality is fourth uh -huh. dimension, they bring it back to third dimensional and your spirituality would be third dimensional. Uh -huh. You might become a very devout Christian or Hindu or Buddhist or your spiritual level and thought patterns would be much different. You would think more, your third eye would open up wide about spiritual things. The other thing that would happen with Octurian is that you will intellectualize what people are saying and put it into a vocabulary that is almost numerical. And, al and also very intentioned. Everything Octorians do is intentioned. So even their language has the intention word in front of the sentence. Or 
in some of their dialects the third word or the fourth word, depending where yeah, on the planet. The way. Uh, so the physiologically, what would you expect? You would expect very little, actually. Physiologically, they don't exist in third dimension. Physiologically, when they bring themselves back to third dimension to do the hybridization in the actual physiological sense, very little will happen to the human because it will be actually go right in and dissolve into the system. So, and make them just actually more human. So, so would it be advisable for me to invite Arcturian? Oh, sh I would not advise against it. I don't see any negative. You said it's becoming more spiritually... Yes, they're actually, I see nothing against it, no. They have great decision-making qualities mm -hmm. as well. Their decision-making qualities make are some of the best in the universe.